Welcome to the channel, I'm Hayes, I talk movies all day, sometimes I talk about games, so subscribe right now if you want to be entertained, and today I want to talk about Jupiter Legacy. Now, I'm not going to get into spoilers and all that thing just yet, but it is a review, so I still might be saying some things that you might not want to hear if you haven't already seen it. I mean, the way I say it, I don't watch reviews until after I've watched the thing, so I kind of have that mentality going in. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't watch reviews until after they watch the thing they're reviewing. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but that's how I see it. Doesn't really matter, that's how I'm doing my review. But if you just want a complete spoiler free, no nonsense review, then all I can say is it's good go watch it. But let's talk about it because it's a pretty interesting show and if you've seen Invincible then I think you'd agree there's definitely more than a few similarities between Invincible and Jupiter's Legacy. I'm not going to get into who rips off who. I know Invincible is a comic series before it was a TV series. Ideas going back and forth around Hollywood so who knows who got the idea from who. But I will say this, they are both pretty much ripped off City of Heroes. Well I mean not really but you know. They're both set in a world where superheroes are pretty commonplace. They both involve a superhero hero family. And although they do it in different ways, they both still deal with the social implications of being a superhero in the modern world. Now that all said, who do you think will win in a fight between the Utopian and Omni-Man? Because I think we need to discuss that. Anyway, I did like Jupiter's Legacy. I thought the whole series was done pretty well. I like the back and forth between what happened in the 1920s and what's happening in the present day. So you're pretty much getting two stories in one. You're getting the present day story and the origin story as it's all unfolding. I like that with the part set in the 1920s, as much as you learn about what what led up to them getting their powers, it also does enough to not do too much and give away everything. And by the end of it, you're definitely left with more than a few questions which Possibly they'll be answering in season two if indeed they do a season two. I'd like to see a season two. But I think the biggest thing about Jupiter's legacy is how it deals with the concepts of right and wrong and how it takes people who came from this era where everything was more black and white, things were simpler back then, a simpler time back in the 1920s. And now in the present day world, the whole thing about the good guys don't kill, how well does that still hold up when the good guys are getting killed? Can there be circumstances where it is justified to kill someone? Now some of you might be thinking, yeah, of course, there is. Others might be thinking, no, 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 never. That's pretty much the basis of the parts of the story that are set in the present day. Because you have these superheroes that abide by this code, this ideal that they need to present. That no matter how tough things get, no matter how bad things may be, they're always going to do the right thing no matter what. But that ideal, that code is constantly being challenged. And on top of that, you have people in the modern world that say, maybe this code just isn't relevant anymore. I think the only things that can falter on is that there are a few times where the action sequences seem a bit that maybe the choreography was off or maybe they didn't practice it enough to get it just right. I saw an interview with Tom Cruise a while ago where he was talking about The Last Samurai and he said something like having to train to get good enough to be able to practice the scene they were doing. I'm guessing with Jupiter's Legacy being a series they probably didn't have the time and money to sink into it to have everybody practice to the point where they're good enough to practice the scenes. Maybe that's why some of the scenes looked a little bit off. But it certainly doesn't ruin the show and to be honest I doubt most people would even notice except now that I've pointed it out you're probably going to notice. Also some of the makeup and practical effects seem a bit off as well. Like, there's a few shots where the Utopian's beards look so fake. And by the way, I'm not even saying it was fake. For all I know, that was Josh Dumas' real beard. What I am saying, it looked fake. It looked like they were about to shoot the scene, realized the makeup department forgot to buy the beard, so they had somebody run out real quick to a pound shop, came back with some glue and just stuck it on. That's what it looks like. And bro, if that was your real beard, then you need to fix that quick because that is a disgrace. And you know what? I'm normally the guy that says there's no such thing as a bad beard. That's the exception. If it was real. I'm guessing it wasn't though. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, overall I liked it. I think they did a lot right with the show. I personally found the scenes that were set in the 1920s a lot more interesting than the present day scenes. Most because the past scenes shape a lot of what happens in the present. And the understanding that gives a lot more context to why things are the way they are now. Definitely had a lot of dramatic and suspenseful moments. And by the end of it, I'm like, yeah, I want to see more. I want to see a season two. I want to know what happens next. But now... I do need to get into some spoilers. So this is the spoiler warning, the actual spoiler warning. Not that maybe I might say something that you might not want to hear warning. This is the actual spoiler warning where, yeah, I'm about to say some things where if you have not seen it, it is going to ruin the experience of watching it for the first time. That's what I mean by spoilers. So if you've not seen it, you might want to watch it first. If you have seen it, please continue. Or if you just don't care for spoilers, then 
Here we go. First of all, big up to Anna O'Connor. I've only seen her in one other movie, which was Ant-Man, but it was a very small role. So this time you got to see a little bit more of her acting ability, which was really cool. But that ending though, oh my days. Oh my days. Yeah, I got took out by her own daddy and not Squarespace either. <laughs> but come to think about it, it was in a square space, so. Hmm. That twist at the end, when you find that it was Walt all along. I've got to be honest, I did not see that coming. I mean, I did kind of feel Walt, maybe he was a little bit dodgy, but not to that extent. In the first episodes we're introducing, he does come across as a little bit dodgy. He just has that kind of demeanor, but I didn't think to that extent he was a dodgy one. Like, nah, I did not see that coming. But it makes sense where he's controlling people's minds, how he set everything up to make it look like George made a clone of Blackstar, and that was done to create dissension because he believes new leadership is needed. But how far is he willing to take this? Because this dude killed his own daughter. That means nothing is off limits. If he has to kill Utopian, if he has to kill Grace, if he has to kill Brandon, if he has to kill anybody else, I'm pretty sure at this point he'll do what he needs to do. But it does leave that question, what happened to George? Because we know they had some issues in the past because George didn't believe in the code anymore. We know that. And we know that George had a son, which he apparently hasn't seen for a long time. But after that, we thought George was a guy controlling it all. Turns out he wasn't. So what's George doing? Is he involved in some Something else? Is he just abandoned it? We don't know. Another thing we don't know is Richard. What happened to Richard? They found this guy floating in the ocean. They convince him to go on this cockamamie adventure with them. They all get superpowers. He gets a magic stick. But in the present day, dude gone. Yet somehow, George's son, Hutch has his magic stick. Did George kill Richard and take his stick and give it to his son as a present? Maybe. Is George even still alive at this point? Maybe. Perhaps that's the reason why Hutch can't find his dad with the magic stick? Maybe. So yeah, I definitely feel like this whole series gave enough answers so you could understand what's going on, why things are happening, why things are the way they are, but also left enough mystery so that we're wanting a season two. But considering it's a Netflix show, this can do really well and still get cancelled. So... But that's what I think of Jupiter's Legacy. What do you think of Jupiter's Legacy? Let me know down below. And while you're there, be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a suggestion if you don't mind.